One group of Muslims in the United States is speaking out against Islamic terrorism. They're taking to the streets of Portland, Oregon to protest radicalism. Gary Lane has their story. Pakistani Muslims rally in support of their nation's blasphemy law and cheer the assassin who killed a governor. Moderate voices were drowned out by extreme shouts of joy, but not in the United States. There's nothing Islamic about blasphemy laws. Rashid Reno is president of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Portland, Oregon. You know that in Pakistan, if, if, there, if there were elements there, um, uh, certain Muslims there would view what you just said as blasphemous. Probably. But they would have no religious basis for it whatsoever. There, there's no, there's no Quranic verse. All they have is some quote from some extreme uh, clergy somewhere. Extremist views such as attacking or killing those who leave the faith are also considered un-Islamic by these Ahmadiyya Muslims. In many Islamic countries, from Egypt to Saudi Arabia and Iran, Muslims who convert to Christianity or any other faith are considered apostates. The Quran says, la ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in religion. So the idea that someone can be punished for changing their religion is completely foreign to Islam. And what about jihad? The waging of war or using violence to expand the reach and influence of Islam. The new jihad of this age is the jihad of the pen. We solve our disputes through intellect and through reason. The age of the jihad of the sword is over. That was the teaching of Pakistani Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. He founded the Ahmadiyya sect in 1889 and taught against violence and the mixing of spirituality and politics. Portland's Ahmadiyya Mosque is nestled in a residential neighborhood on the city's south side. We caught up with members on a Saturday morning as they prepared to blanket downtown Portland with flyers promoting their message of peace. We're here not to, not to argue or, uh, or confront anyone. So that's basically it. We later found them distributing flyers at Pioneer Square, the same place where young Somali Muslim Mohammed Asman Mahmoud allegedly plotted to detonate a weapon of mass destruction. FBI agents arrested him as Portlanders gathered for a Christmas tree lighting ceremony. What can be done to prevent young Muslim men or others from becoming radicalized by extremist teachings on websites, in mosques and Islamic schools? The FBI was tipped off by the father of the alleged Christmas tree bomber. Ahmadiyya youth leader Salman Ahmed says lessons of peace and patriotism don't just begin at home. Their parents, their family, and then the circles in which they live in, their schools, uh, if they go to a mosque, the mosques all have a responsibility to ensure that, uh, that, that, our, that our children walk the right path. And it isn't just the adults that are involved in handing out these flyers from the Ahmadiyya Mosque here in Portland, but also some young people like 13-year-old Shuja. Uh, so why are you doing this? I'm just doing this to promote the message that Muslims are not people that we see on TV every day. The people that are bombing, bombing buildings. That most, the people that do that are going against the teachings of Islam. Don't persecute Muslims just because you see a Muslim doesn't mean they're going to go and bomb a building. It's the moderate Muslim voice that we as Americans have been longing for, yearning for since 9-11. Dan Sockel worked as a military contractor in Iraq. He now shares his experiences while teaching a course at Vancouver's Clark College. This is almost a uh, two-for-one, where it's not just a courageous, uh, a bold step forward on behalf of moderate Muslims everywhere, but it's specifically in reaching out to those younger generations that it should be our greatest concern. I think the voice that I represent is a voice of not only reason, but also courage. Reverend Anton DeWitt is with the First Congregational United Church of Christ of Portland. It's a voice that we dare not lose, and we should, we should do everything within our power to protect this voice. So how can evangelical Christians show support without compromising their faith? CBN News visited Multnomah Biblical Seminary, where we met with Paul Metzger, professor of theology and culture. He says Christians must hold true to their biblical and theological convictions about God and salvation. 
but always moving through them toward engaging the other. And I think of Jesus' own words in Luke 10 about the Samaritan story, and it's to care for the person uh, whom we would often uh, uh, ostracize or we would uh, ignore. And Jesus says, your neighbor is the person not like you, least like you, conviction with compassion. Uh, that's what scripture calls us to. As for young Ahmadiyya Muslims like Shuja, you may see them on a street corner in your city, handing out brochures and spreading a message of peace and moderation, with or without the supportive voices of others. Gary Lane, CBN News, Portland, Oregon. Well, Muslims for Peace, that's a story you're not going to see anywhere else, but we're bringing it to you to let you know there are voices within the Muslim community that are asking for peace and saying uh, radical terrorism is not part of our religion. Historically, that group in Pakistan uh, ended up in the 1920s, 1930s, being very instrumental in coming to peace with Mahatma Gandhi, and it ended up in the partition of Pakistan and India. Uh, which has not been a peaceful relationship since uh, because the radicals uh, have taken over. So we, we need to encourage these voices, and, and I'm all for it. Christy? You know what was neat about that story, Gordon, as I was sitting there thinking, um, like Gary Lane said, how as we... Uh, Christians, how can we support them even though we don't necessarily share that same mindset or the same religion? And it is like Jesus calls us to do, to love our neighbor, to, uh, to support them and to help them, but, you know, still stay strong to the belief of Jesus Christ. Well, there's Christ. another one, and it's from Luke chapter 10, yeah. where he's sending out the 70 mm -hmm. to go preach the gospel. Yeah. I mean, he's telling them to go witness, go evangelize, go, meet, go be missionaries, essentially. And he says, if you find someone of peace, mm -hmm. if, you, if you send forth your peace and it stays with them, then go in with them, eat with them, uh, stay with them. If your peace comes back to you, then leave them. Uh, so, you know, there, there's plenty of uh, room here, if you will, uh, for us to, to get along and, and still stay true to Christian tenets. Absolutely.